We need to learn how to use what the scriptures promise as the single most powerful tool in parenting, which is prayer. Now look down at Acts 6, and let's park here for a second. Because uh, we need to, to see this concept. When Jesus left the earth and went back to heaven. Now, now just think in your mind. This, this, this will help you understand how important prayer is. Jesus spent three, it appears from the gospel record, from looking at all the, the feasts and the chronology, that Jesus spent three and one half years on earth in his public ministry. And he picked 12 men to follow him around. In fact, Mark 3.14 has the most interesting word to us about what discipleship is. It says, and he ordained 12 that they should be with him. That was Jesus' plan. Didn't have a manual, didn't have a book, didn't have a program, didn't have a uh, you know, high-tech, you know, gizmo, wizmo thing. He just said, be with me. And watch how I do things, listen to what I say, ask me questions, and you will be my disciple. And so... They did that for three and a half years. And as soon as Jesus left, what was the one thing that they caught from his life? Look at chapter 6 and verse 4. But we, now see, they got backed in a corner. They got in a situation they didn't know what to do. They got uh, overwhelmed. And they said, we know what we were called and what our example of the Lord is. We will give ourselves continually to prayer. What was the one thing that they picked up from Jesus Christ? What did they, those who were closest to him remember about him? What did they imitate? Because remember, imitation is the highest form of compliment. What did they imitate from his life? Prayer. Well, let's, let's think through this. The most powerful tool in godly parenting is what? Praying for our children and grandchildren. How do we do that? Well, we come to the place. We come to the place where we ask the question, how can we do it? How can we possibly do all those things, that godliness side in their life, and that parenting, the patient life, and that attitude? How can we have that? And then we say, how can we penetrate into their hearts? You know, that's, that's what's so amazing about our culture. The church, I'm talking about the, the, the corporate, wider body of Christ, not this church, but the church globally, so often attacks things in a, in a physical and an external way. And so instead of saying, how can we penetrate their hearts, what they say is, how can we attract them in? And how can we get them there? And, and we should be asking, how can we penetrate their hearts? And how can we see God unleashed in their lives? And how can we see God's word? Not just fly out there and, and fall to the ground. How can we see God's word be as it's promised, to be as an arrow and as a sword and to penetrate personally touching their lives? Those are the questions. And so, what's the answer? Well, the answer is this, that we look at four areas that we can pray over in their lives, their spiritual lives. And I'm going to talk about this. And then secondly, their personal lives. And then thirdly, their family life, how they relate in your family and outside. And then finally, how they're going to be prepared for ministry. Now, think about this. When when Jesus left the earth and went back to heaven, those who were closest to him remembered one thing. That Jesus constantly resorted to prayer. When did he pray? He prayed before major events. He prayed after major events. He prayed after long days of ministry. He prayed before long days of ministry. In fact, his whole life was sewn up and hemmed in with prayer. 